and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below because we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Uh, in this video, we're going to do a uh, short example on concrete columns and specifically short concrete columns that are tied or confined. How this video is kind of going to kind of pan out is we're going to do this example that we have on the page, which is pretty straightforward. We'll explain a little bit about uh, how the code allows us to calculate axial resistances, the Canadian code, and then uh, we'll cover a little bit about what short and slender columns are, but only very basically. And we're going to kind of focus on just uh, assuming that this is a short column for now. Uh, we'll do another video where we compare short and slender columns. So right here we have a short concrete column that's tied where it's reinforced and we're asked to find the axial load resistance for this column. Um, we're going to do that according to CSA A233. Okay, So we're going to do the Canadian code. Direct your attention to the diagram on the screen. There's a few main components of a reinforced concrete column. So this is just to give you kind of a little bit of a background of like what makes up a concrete column if you're new to this and what it consists of. So uh, the main components are longitudinal reinforcement. So that's the reinforcing longitudinal steel that we use in compression in a column. The transverse reinforcement, so that's either ties or uh, spiral um, transverse reinforcement in the case of circular columns, and a concrete core. So if you take a look at the screen, the graphic there, the core is the portion of the concrete column that is contained by the stirrups, so it's confined by the ties. Okay. Now the longitudinal reinforcement, uh, assuming that the ties provided are adequate in order to uh, you know, brace and confine that longitudinal reinforcement, um, it contributes to the load comparing capacity in two, of the column in two ways. Now it increases the column's compressional capacity and additionally, it also provides flexural capacity. The transverse reinforcement, this uh, provides a number of benefits to a concrete column. Now, it provides lateral restraint to the longitudinal bars under compression uh, to prevent buckling, as I mentioned. Um, it increases the compressive strength and prevents sudden bursting of the concrete core, which is the confined portion. And it holds uh, the reinf uh, longitudinal reinforcement in place while they're constructing the columns. Otherwise, you know, the steel would just be flopping all over the place. And it resists shear and torsion when reinforcing for these effects is required. Now, the concrete core is the most important part. Uh, concrete, as we know, is a very efficient material in compression. Concrete itself, though, without the presence of steel, is not so useful because it's a very brittle material. So um, if it were to fail, it would fail very suddenly. And that is not, as we know, the code and in structural design, brittle failures are not uh, encouraged. So uh, the steel helps uh, in ductility. Uh, it helps prevent brittle failure. It ensures ductile behavior. The, the important part to, to note here is, is that studies have shown that as we increase the amount of ties in the column, uh, we increase the amount of uh, compressive strength proportionately. So that was just a little bit of background. A uh, little bit of uh, general knowledge on the things that make up a concrete column and how they contribute to its uh, compressive resistance in a structure. The slenderness of columns. The, the idea uh, behind a short column is it's used to denote a column that has a strength determined based on the equations of equilibrium of forces developed in a column's cross section. So short columns fail due to material failure, i.e. you know your concrete strength wasn't high enough for your load or your longitudinal steel was not enough. So it's steel controlled, concrete con controlled, or balanced failure. Um, a column is considered slender if it's least cross-sectional area, so the smallest cross-sectional area, this column is equal, is quite small compared to its length. So you have, let's say, a 250 by 1000 column. Slender columns have a smaller axial load carrying capacity than short columns because they're susceptible to instability failures. So they're susceptible to buckling, to P delta second order effects um, due to perhaps uh, non-concentric loading or, you know, accidental eccentricities in, during construction. So in this case, uh, you know, there's a method for determining slender columns, but for here, we're just going to assume this is a short column. So um, in the Canadian code, the factored ax axial load resistance of a reinforced column is the sum of the steel that's placed in the column and the cross-sectional concrete axial resistance. So it's uh, the addition of the concrete resistance and the steel resistance. And that formula is given by P R naught is equal to alpha one phi C F prime C 
multiplied by the gross area minus the area of steel, okay, plus the, and this is the axial resistance of the concrete, and the axial resistance of the steel in compression, which is phi S Fy area of steel, okay, and this is steel. Okay, so we have two terms here. Now, in practical terms, um, this term here, where we subtract the gross area from the area of steel, um, is kind of an unnecessary step and is really never performed if you're doing actual calculations uh, because the difference is very, very negligible. So we're trying to find the net area of concrete, which is the area of concrete minus the area of steel. Usually we're just going to use uh, area gross here. Now, um, the code specifies, depending on the type of column we have, so we have a square column that's confined here. Um, so the concrete code describes a uh, reduction factor. So the reduction factor for tied columns Okay, it depends actually, once your uh, smallest dimension decreases past 300, your reduction factor starts to in, uh, increase. You get less capacity. So the reduction factor, I'm just gonna put it over here. So the reduction factor for tied columns. So our maximum axial resistance is equal to 0.8 of PR naught, okay? So this formula, we're gonna take 80% of that and we're going to assume that that's the maximum capacity that the column can take. And why is that? That seems, you know, kind of very conservative, and it is, um, because, you know, we're also using factored loads. On top of factored loads, we're decreasing the column's capacity by, by 20%. Um, the reason for this is kind of for unanticipated or accidental moments in um, concentrically loaded short columns. Now, you know, a lot of the times in practical design, when we design slabs and stuff like that, we don't look at all the unbalanced moments in the columns. Um, or perhaps during construction, the column is not placed exactly on center um, due to construction error or layout problems. So this gives us um, a larger factor of safety and the code requires it. If we simplify this, now we'll just take this over here. Okay, if we simplify this, we assume that we're just gonna use AG. We can say that PR max for tied columns, not spiral columns, we're not talking about circular, we're just talking about square here. So PR max is simply uh, simplified 0 0.80. And this is for columns that are uh, have the smallest dimension greater uh, 300 or greater. And that's times alpha one phi C F prime C AG plus phi S F Y A G A S T. Okay, sorry, I that got a little messy, but phi S F Y A S T. So area of steel. Now we can go ahead and we can try and solve this problem now that we have those formulas. Okay, so first let's um, let's just calculate all of these unknowns. Now alpha one here. I'm just gonna rewrite this P R max formula so it's more clear. Okay, so we have alpha one. Okay, alpha one is a formula, but we can assume uh, for you know regular strength concretes. Alpha 1 is going to be about 0.8. Okay, uh, we, have F, uh, we have phi C that's given to us in the question. Uh, we have uh, the concrete strength and we have our gross area. Okay, so gross area is going to be 500 times 500, right, in millimeters squared. Okay, and that's going to give us 25,000 millimeters squared of area of concrete. And what else do we need to calculate? Well, we need the area of steel. Okay, the area of steel. We know that a 30 m bar has 700 millimeters squared of uh, area, and we have eight of them in this uh, concrete column. So we're going to multiply this by 700. We're going to get 5,600 millimeters squared of steel in our column. That's longitudinal. And um, we can check to see if this column uh, counts as confined. Uh, what confined means is because if we tie the column according to the code minimums, this column benefits greatly in axial uh, resistance if it's confined. So this confined portion in the center by these closed ties really determine whether or not this column is going to fail or not, whether or not this longitudinal steel will buckle. So we have 10 at 300 ties that is uh, according to the code within the minimum. So, you know, we can assume that this is a confined column. Now, that's pretty much all we need to to use. It's just it's very simple. Just plugging into the formula, um, and we can go ahead and do that now. So let's plug in. So our axial load resistance is simply let's take our reduction factor of 0.8. Okay, uh, alpha one is 0 0.8 times uh, phi c times f prime c, which is 25 MPa. Make sure we're using the right units too. 
and that's times 25,000 plus. Let's uh, add, and this is the concrete resistance. So that term that we just put in there is the concrete resistance. Let's put in the steel resistance. So that's going to be 0.85, okay, by S. That's given in the question. Fy, which is 400, and AST area of steel. So area of steel is 5,600 millimeters squared. Okay, and if we calculate that, we're going to get that the axial resistance of our column is equal to 4,123 kilonewton. Okay, pretty simple. So that's how we calculate the axial resistance of our column. So what we would do in practice, so because we would use these code specified axial resistances, um, we probably put them in a spreadsheet of some kind, and we would calculate based on tributary areas the loads on our column at every floor, and we would compare them to the axial resistance. And as long as um, we're pro we could provide less than eight percent steel, our column is adequate in size. That's just a very basic kind of approach. Um, there's much more complicated you know, and, uh, you know, efficient ways to design columns. But we just wanted to start with a simple example. So next video, let's uh, do an example um, where we check to see if it's short or slender and we talk a little bit more about slender columns. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below what you want to see next in terms of concrete columns. Thanks for watching, guys.